Well, hello out there, all you men and women and girls and boys and children of all ages. Thank you so much for jumping in to this video right now. My name is Danny Coldblood, a.k.a. my music video. And boy, oh boy, do I have a video for you today. This is going to be one of those jam-packed videos with information. So throw on your tinfoil hats and do not be shy to leave some comments down below giving me your thoughts, your ideas, your opinions, and theories that you probably are going to come up with while watching this video because I have a brand new discovery that I found while checking out the new updates, not to mention all the new clues and connections and very strange coincidences that in my opinion lead to a mystery that is connected to not just GTA Online, but other Rockstar Games titles as well. So let's go ahead and start off by talking about the new serial killer, random event type of situation that we have in the game. We have to go to this location and find the clue. And how does Rockstar utilize the way that they want to give us clues? By giving us audio clues, by giving us a certain sound. This is the type of stuff that lets us know that there's something nearby to investigate. So take a listen to this. So that is pretty creepy, and it definitely makes me think of other situations within not only Grand Theft Auto V, but other Rockstar titles as well that kind of make me think about what direction Rockstar might be trying to take with the clues that they're giving us. So first things first is analyze the location and see if there's anything else that kind of jumps out at us, and the first thing that jumped out at me was this sign right here above the clue and it says 100% pure prune juice nature's emergency button. Before I start talking about the different connections I believe that this is relevant to, let's go ahead and bring up the fact that we can now get Packy McCreary from GTA 4 and GTA 5 story mode within online for use in the new heist. So this is pretty interesting as a standalone fact, they're not only tying their past again, yet with their present and hinting with the future, clue-wise, but something Packy says definitely makes me feel like it's relevant to not only the mystery, but the clues that we're looking at right now with that prune juice sign. You don't have to look that hard to find clues like this, because Rockstar throws them right in your face! Jackie McCreary from the fine borough of Dukes in God's own Liberty City. I came to LS seeking fame and fortune and I found boredom and idiots. The city full of cokeheads who ain't on coke. I swear they put something in that kale juice. Like the kind of drink that Michael has at home? Like 100% pure? Like nature's button? I was making myself a juice. Broccoli, raw kale, fish oil. I'm gonna go home and do some yoga. Drink some wheatgrass and go to my favorite farmer's market. I swear they put something in that kale juice. Hey, if anyone needs kale, my friend. I'm beyond kale, okay? It's too late for kale and its magical powers to have any effect on me. Fine. Or yoga or talk therapy. Through the art of self-meditation, yoga, and a freak green energy accident, which gave me unnatural godlike powers, I became... Rage, 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 rage. Oh, don't worry, T. They'd skip that talk and go straight to shock treatment with your ass. Prepare to be shocked. Unless you're showing me Bigfoot, you should know. <laughs> I'm not so easily shocked, Mr. Miller. So, you've seen all the clues and connections so far, and then right here, topping it off, is how the sign for impotent rage talks about being 100% sustainable, okay? They keep on bringing up the 100%. The clues are all over the place, and it's just about connecting them. It's like a puzzle, and just putting the pieces in the right spots. Okay, now going back to the whole serial killer random event type of situation, we hear an audio hint, you know, the music that draws us to this location, and then investigating this location, we see the clue. And the clue is, can you find me? Once you investigate it, you can go ahead and look for the second clue. And this is definitely something that we've done before, previously with Rockstar, 
but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So the second location is right here by Sandy Shores, um, right there at the airstrip actually, Trevor's airstrip, and you can see it's a hand. After we investigate the hand, we can head to the next location, which isn't far away at all. Right here in Graveseed, we have to investigate this machete that is stuck inside of this wall of the barn or shed or whatever this is. After we do that, we can go to the next location. Right under Polito Bay, we have this little area here, and this parking lot has the next clue, which is basically a handprint, a bloody handprint on the uh, surface there. Investigate that, and we can go to the last location. But the last location is not a set place. There's a couple different spots that we would have to check out and see if it's the right place, like this one. The Palmer Taylor Power Station. A huge suspicious location since in story mode this is where Michael dies. The next place is another huge suspicious location as in online we have to have those 600 supply missions done for the whole alien egg event that is also part of the checklist needed when ultimately trying to get that tattoo that is only given to us when we wake up from drinking Macbeth liquor up on Old Man's Crack at Mount Chiliad and I believe that those steps are definitely required in solving at least this aspect of the mystery and I will talk about that in the next video coming out so stay tuned I don't want to get too far off track but I want to show how obvious Rockstar is being every different location that we have to check to see you know if it's the right spot to end the serial killer um, little events all these locations are huge locations when tied to trying to solve this uh, Chiliad mystery. So I think it's very suspicious that this location is one of the uh, places to go ahead and look at. And if you thought this place was suspicious, it is, but take a look at the next place that we would have to check out. Right here at Ratton Canyon, and most of you may know that this is where we find the golden peyote that turns us into Bigfoot in story mode. And we know that Rockstar just hinted at the peyotes and stuff with the Halloween update, only giving us a couple days to have them in online. So don't worry, I'll be covering all of this in the next video as well. This is basically like a, a part one of two, so definitely stay tuned for the next video. But let's go ahead and get to the last location that it can spawn at, and this is the location that it actually spawned for me. The final location to go ahead and solve the serial killer random events type of situation that we got going on here, and that is right here on the Eastern Highway. And at first, it might not seem like a suspicious location to you, but let me go ahead and show you guys the perspective that I have when taking a look at this. So we have the creepy music going on, that's a check. We have a van now, that's interesting. We go up to it, we can actually investigate it, which is actually the investigation for the final clue, and that is a bloody mess. We got some machetes and stuff like that, so not a pretty sight, but this is the last location. Once we go ahead and investigate this, we will be greeted in just a moment by a lovely text message sent to us from, yes, the killer himself. So let's go ahead and show you guys this message basically saying that uh, the next thing that happens to us ain't gonna be a good thing and then basically what happens is if you're in Blaine County has to be in Blaine County and you're within the time frames of 7 p.m. and 5 a.m. the serial killer will come after you and try to kill you if every one of these steps were completed and you investigated all these previous locations you get the text message and then you have to be in Blaine County between the hours of 7 p.m. and 5 a.m. The killer will come after you and try to kill you. Okay, so this is where things start to get interesting. Once you kill the slasher, uh, the whole mystery or event uh, is basically over. It's concluded. 
But unfortunately, all of us need so much for entertainment nowadays, the sheer satisfaction of killing the killer wasn't good enough, and Rockstar knew that, and they implemented something else. They gave us uh, basically a reward. Here is your wonderful new weapon, they say, for killing this killer, and it is the Navy Revolver, and we have it for use within GTA Online with the promise of some extra little goodies in Red Dead Redemption 2 Online if we get 50 kills with this gun. But before I went ahead and did that, being the hunter that I am, knowing that I just got a weapon as a reward from killing a serial killer, I had to go ahead and inspect this gun out. And it's very ominous, it's got your necks and all these tally marks and all this stuff on there. So I went into the Rockstar Editor and I zoomed in as much as I could, looked at all the nook and crannies on there, and I'll tell you what, there was one part that didn't seem to want to show itself, and that is the right side of the handle. Obviously you're holding it, so how can you see it? And some people out there probably will think to themselves, wow, you're going overboard. What are you going to find on the damn gun? But some words of wisdom from a character within the Rockstar Games universe tells us not to leave any stones unturned. And in a couple moments, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about with that, because it's going to all connect. So, me being the way I am, I don't leave any stones unturned as long as I'm aware of it. And I wanted to go ahead and inspect this gun as thoroughly as possible. Some people might remember when I was broadcasting the Doomsday Heist live, I seen the clones and I recorded the uh, gameplay with the editor and I went into it afterwards and noticed how we can glitch past their faces and see how they're made of all mechanical parts like the Terminator underneath that fake skin. So I've been known to do this kind of stuff and look what happens when I did it again with the new item, the Navy Revolver in a GTA Online. Do you guys see this screen right now? We have a secret code on this gun. We have initials E.L, but we have 63432. What the heck could that be? Is E.L possibly a reference to Eddie Lowe, the serial killer from GTA 4? I mean, he kind of looks like the slasher killer that we have within GTA Online, the one that we killed to get the gun, but we don't know for sure because there's more to E.L than just Eddie Lowe. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Remember a minute ago how I showed you the last location that we had to investigate was in very suspicious locations like where the golden peyote for Bigfoot spawns, the alien egg and alien UFO supply mission uh, event that happens after 600 supply runs. Okay, and then we had this location and I said it was important. Well, here's why I believe it's important. Right next to this location is the highway code. Most of you are familiar with this. It's almost like Rockstar is pointing the location out. As you can see, they've done it before by having Trevor literally piss on the wall right below the damn code. I mean, come on, how much more obvious does Rockstar need to get? As you can see, this is the location of the highway code right here. And look how close the location is that we had to go to for the last investigation for the whole slasher event. All the other locations that it could have possibly have been at are all huge relevant spots when looking at the Chiliad mystery, so what would this location be looking at? Except for the highway code. And then coincidentally, we get a code with the reward for completing that slasher event? And it's not like they gave us the code in a text message. I had to go into the editor and glitch through my own hand to see that there was a code. I had to investigate, I had to do some hunting. So the fact that there's a code found and it's tied with initials that happen to be E, L, and those initials happen to be the same initials as a serial killer in GTA 4 and a serial killer in Red Dead Redemption 2, I think that there's a possibility we can utilize these numbers and hopefully with the help of the community as one, as we unite as a unit, hopefully we can get a little bit further with trying to progress into the solving of the Chilean mystery. So please leave anything you have in the comments below because it is so important we get to the bottom of these things. Otherwise, it's just gonna be fragmented clue and connection after fragmented clue and connection. Let's start piecing this puzzle together. So let's follow the Rockstar Trail to Red Dead Redemption 2 because 
we get our 50 kills with that Navy Revolver, and we have something waiting for us in Red Dead Online. So, if we go to Blackwater and go to the graveyard, we can find there is something waiting for us on the wall. It's something that we might be a little bit familiar with as we just went through this in GTA Online. It says, can you find me? The exact same four words that started off the event with the slasher killer in GTA Online. Can you find me? Now, if we go ahead and travel over to a little bit underneath Valentine, a little bit southwest of Valentine, we can go into this underground area and then we will get the Navy Revolver within RDR Online. A hell of a lot less steps and a lot smaller of a process to get the Revolver here in Red Dead, but we had to do everything in GTA Online to even be able to do this in Red Dead. So look at it how you wish. And the one thing I want to point out is the gun looks identical. It looks exactly the same. I cannot wait until the editor is released in Red Dead Redemption 2 because I will be doing so much more hunting I would love to know if the same code is scratched in to the handle of this gun as well but until then we have to use the facts that we have we have to use the tools that we're given we know that EL is the initials and we know that EL could be Edmund Lowry because the name of the gun in this game is the Lowry revolver unlike the name in GTA Online, which is the Navy Revolver. So, these three guys, are they all connected? One may say, well, they can't be because GTA 4 was a different year and a different location than GTA 5, and RDR 2 was even, you know, earlier. But let me remind you, this is Rockstar Games, and they can pull things off. Time traveling is not something that would be out of their grasp. They've hinted to it before, they've given us the DeLorean, okay? There's a whole entire mystery that's still unsolved in Red Dead Redemption 2 single player, which I think the whole community basically agrees on time travel as an explanation. But the bottom line is we really don't know. All we can do is speculate and talk amongst each other and discuss different opinions and theories. So let me know what you guys think because right now we don't have an answer. We can always ask Madame Nazar. She does have a crystal ball and she claims to uh, have the future open to her. So what better place to start than Madame Nazar? It just so happens that in Grand Theft Auto Online, the recent Diamond Heist update, we have the ability to buy this wonderful Madame Nazar arcade game where we can suspiciously put a quarter in the machine and she'll tell us some sort of information, whether it's true, whether it's the future, whether it's just plain old good advice, or possibly the next steps needed to take for the solving of a unsolved mystery. Take a listen to some of the stuff that she says though. This is some really suspicious stuff. Since this code and the numbers that she's yelling out of her mouth are both from the same update, this past update, I'm wondering if maybe that code is somehow connected to a phone number, because we can ultimately get three different sets of numbers from Madame Nazar at the arcade machine, and they turn out to be a phone number, which you call, and it's her. Now I haven't found a purpose for this, so maybe this is somehow incorporated. I believe it's useful somewhere. And that's what happens every time we call her, nothing else seems to be going on. We don't get to talk to her, nothing seems to happen. I believe the right day of the week, the right time of day, the right location, all the prerequisites have to be met, and something will definitely trigger, in my opinion. But until we know or discover that, it's just an Easter egg for now. Take a listen at some of the other stuff she says though, because it seems very suspicious and a lot more than just standalone Easter eggs. I thought that was crazy that she's talking about untangling a web. 
the web at Mount Chiliad is one of the oldest mysteries that are unsolved within this game. And as you can see, I went up there with my phone and I called Madame Nazar to see if maybe something would trigger or happen and at my curious demise, a whole lot of lackluster nothing happened. While we're talking about webs, I want to bring up the actual image for the Diamond Casino Heist. See the mask, the mouth area? Does that not look like a web to you? Let me know in the comments. Maybe that's something. Wouldn't it be the first time Rockstar used artwork to show us a clue? I just think it's very suspicious how she's giving us information through this arcade machine. She's not only available for us to call on the phone, even though it doesn't seem like it's doing anything, but now she's telling us different things and giving us different advice, like don't leave any stones unturned. So I decided to listen to that advice as I've tried this whole time, but I went to the one location that really makes sense to go to since we're talking about all these different mystery locations and stuff, and that is within Grand Theft Auto single player we had the Mystery Mineshaft, which also connected to another Rockstar Games title, which was L.A. Noir. And it seems like we're going back in time, whether to L.A. Noir or to Red Dead Redemption 2. So. We're time traveling whether we want to believe it or not. So I thought it was interesting to check it out and of course I didn't see or find anything, but at every damn dead end I called Madame Nazar. You were looking for me? Yes. The future is open to me. 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 But calling Madame Nazar did nothing at all except for let me know that the future is open to her. I did try the mural though, why not? Come on, leave no stone unturned and it's the mural for Christ's sakes. You gotta try it. You were looking for me? Yes. The future is open to me. So she said that our every move is watched and to be careful, avoid even the smallest misdemeanor. That makes me think of the karma theories that a lot of different hunters and easter egg hunters have had. Think about it. What is she trying to tell us? Avoid getting in trouble. Avoid doing anything wrong. Maybe Rockstar is trying to hint at us some of the stuff that we need to do. Maybe they're talking and we're just not listening. Come on, even trees talk. If one listens. Well, so far we covered a lot and I've shown a lot of different clues and connections along with the brand new discovery, the hidden secret code on the handle of the Navy revolver. Right now I think that everything that we covered is enough for us to have at this moment. I don't want to overdo it and have things get lost in the sauce or forgotten about. Like I said, the next video that comes out will be basically like a sequel to this one. It's going to have a lot of depth into it, a lot of interesting things that I really want you guys to understand, especially while the weather is the way it is in GTA Online, which, speaking of, happy freaking Christmas, or Merry Christmas, however you want to say it, have a damn good holiday, and I hope you guys stay tuned to the next video because it really is going to complement this one, and this one complements it. I'll leave you with some words of wisdom by the one and only Madame Nazar. So thank you all for jumping in once again, I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by liking the video. If you didn't enjoy the video, well then dislike it. But don't be a jerk, leave me a comment telling me why you hated such things. And uh, if I don't see you in the next video, then take it easy. Ta-ta, and as always, peace.
His name is Johnny. He sits at home. He longs to be on the spot again. I see a door in the shape of a circle, and behind it, endless 